All right, hey guys, it's Miss McLean here. Um, I would like everybody to know I uh, am not wearing the exact same thing every single day. I made this entire week's worth of videos in one day. So um, that's why I am wearing the same clothes all the time. So today you guys are going to be reading chapter four and then you're going to be cre uh, uh, completing the chapter visual for chapter four. So um, for each chapter I created, um, I paired it with a work of art. And so for each chapter you're going to analyze a painting and I want you to think about composition, subject matter, color, symbolism, and anything else you can think about the painting. I'm going to link the painting to some aspect of the chapter. Um, and then I want you to explore one primary theme from that list like we did on the 31st and that relates to both the painting and the chapter. One theme for the painting and the chapter. And then you're going to explain how that theme is explored in the chapter and mirrored in your painting. You need to incorporate at least one literary device into your analysis. You need to make sure you underline it. Um, and we're looking for about a half a page of analysis per chapter. So I'm going to, we're going to take a look at this first chapter's um, visual. So I can kind of walk you through what you should be thinking about before you do your writing. So with this painting, um, it's called Exotic Landscape by Henri Rousseau. And first thing that jumps out at you, obviously, is that it's a jungle, right? Which fits in really nicely with the start of Lord of the Flies. Okay, with Lord of the Flies, um, the, the sound of the shell, that first chapter, they've arrived in this, uh, you know, jungle paradise for the first time. So this is a great representation of that. So when you're looking at the, the painting itself, I want you to really think about what it looks like, that kind of thing. So something that should jump out to you is that this is a relatively cartoony painting, right? It is representative in that it shows me what it is, right? It's a painting. It's not like abstract or, or pointillism or anything like that. Um, but there is something a little cartoony, something a little bit childish about it. Okay, which is an interesting thought. You also notice um, that it's very dense, right? It's very close. You have monkeys. You have a monkey here. You've got a monkey down here. You've got another monkey here, and you have one right here. And then right in the middle, in the center, you have a parrot. I know maybe it doesn't look like a parrot, but it is. Um, it's not a man. It's a parrot perched on a branch. Um, so, and you also notice that there's like fruit and all that kind of thing around. You also notice that these monkeys are hidden. So there's something about hiding, maybe something about shelter. Okay, you have some beautiful foliage and greenery, right? It seems inviting. Okay, you have this monkey that's staring at this parrot while this monkey is looking directly at the viewer, right? You could talk about how the green and the symbolism is, uh, represents life and vitality and that kind of thing. Um, but these hidden monkeys down here maybe represent that there's something a little scarier, something a little bit more... Um, strange going on. So then you have to think about how am I going to link this painting to the story? Well, like I said, this one's actually pretty obvious, right? Um, you have this beautiful idyllic setting, which is jungly. Um, but even in that first chapter, we already have some inklings that this isn't great. Everything is not as it seems. And that this world without grownups is probably going to be a lot more complicated than Jack or Ralph um, or Piggy even imagine uh, that it's going to, you know, like Piggy says, we may die here. Okay. Um, so when it comes to themes with this one, I, you could talk about, um, loss of innocence. You could talk about use and abuse of power. Um, as we're already seeing, uh, Ralph take center stage here. So right, maybe even this pair right here represents Ralph. Um, and uh, you can talk about symbolism, you can talk about setting, right? So we're incorporating literary devices into our analysis. So that's what you're going to be doing, but in, an, in a written form. So the painting that you're going to be dealing with is this one, because chapter four is called Painted Faces and Long Hair. So I want you to think about how is this painting put together? What does it look like? Why is that important? And then how can I link that to chapter four? All right. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please uh, ask me. I'll be on Zoom from 11 to 12, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.